Hi, welcome. I'm Dr. Ginger Blackstone. I'm an assistant professor at Harding University and I'm on the NBS Board of Governors. Um, welcome to Career Focus Friday. Today, our speaker is Jonathan Bentley, who is a, a former, well, he went, he's one of our students who graduated from Harding, um, but he's had a very interesting kind of career path just in the few years that he's been out of school. He's also a former active member of NBS. As a matter of fact, he's one that came to me and said, I want to go to the convention. What would it do? What would we have to do to go? And a, a very small group of us went to New York City and had a really great time. Um, so uh, welcome, Jonathan. I'm glad to see you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Um, OK, so just briefly so people will understand who you are and what you've done. Just talk a little bit about the experiences you've had since you've graduated. Well, since I've graduated, um, I actually went right back into uh, an internship, a paid internship. Uh, very, very thankful for that. Uh, that led to a full-time job uh, at the same company. I worked for a set of minor league baseball teams in East Tennessee. Uh, doing graphic design, video production. Um, I got to oversee the broadcast for the first full season I was there. Um, and then the operating group I worked for added a fourth team. So I stayed pretty busy working for uh, a little bit of everyone. But uh, after that, uh, I had the opportunity to continue my education at NC State. And I'm currently uh, getting ready to enter my second year and final year of my program. Yeah, and you're actually doing a lot of work with the women's basketball team while you're there, so it's not just, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> How much work are you doing right now? <laughs> I don't know what the basketball season is going to look like. Yeah, they, uh, well, I work on their graphic design for recruiting materials. Okay. Uh, so uh, right now I go into the office about every other week. Uh, but typically I'm just on call for any of the coaches who need me to make something for one of the players and whatever else they might need me to do. I think there's a couple of things about your story that I think will really speak to um, current MBS members, particularly how did you land that initial internship? And then how did that initial internship turn into employment? I realized that in the sports industry, that's a pretty competitive environment. Um, so what made you stand out in your mind? What, what did you do that you felt was the right thing? Uh, I think for me, it was just a willingness to try new things, to say yes to a new opportunity. Going into it, I had, it was a graphic design internship with some video work and I had the video work but I had very little Photoshop experience which terrified me going into it uh, but I worked in that program I worked in Photoshop every day for the next two to three months I came in about halfway through the season and um, just figured out and learned how to use it um, I got to continue making videos and editing and um, just kind of dip my toe in, in every aspect of our production that we had. And I got to run cameras and uh, take pictures during games, run the video board. I did everything. So again, I think it was just the willingness to do whatever they asked. And um, eventually, uh, well, the person that hired me, unfortunately was let go. Uh, but that having all that experience, I think led to me being able to say, hey, I can do all this, I'm going to apply. And unfortunately, they knew me, they knew my work ethic, and, and that translated into full-time the next year. How did you find out about the opportunity initially? How did you know? I don't know that minor league teams would necessarily get that much traction. I think people would be drawn more to major league teams, but, I, I, but I'm guessing those internships are probably, of course, a lot harder to land. Oh, actually, there's, uh, for sports jobs, there's a website called Teamworks Online, mm -hmm. uh, and you can search by state and area, and I just, I started, I was back in Knoxville at home at the time, and um, just was searching and found this internship, and it was 
in Sevierville, which was about 40 minutes down the road. And I thought I could do that and um, uh, went into it. And I learned pretty quickly that unless you're really good coming out of college and really have connections, you can't really go straight to the major leagues if you, especially if you like, you want to work in baseball. A lot of people, it's like being a player. You start in the minor leagues and work your way up. So uh, I just, the timing is right. And uh, thankfully, I got a response probably three to four days after I applied and interviewed and started two weeks later. Nice. Okay, so branding is a big thing. People talk about having a personal brand. And when you're working on graphics for a team, you're working on their branding. So what kind of things do you try to incorporate in the branding that maybe some students could use when they're looking at designing their resumes or putting their reels together? What, what speaks to an audience? Uh, I think one of the biggest things is, is being honest and real. I mean, unfortunately, we live in a time still where people are, I would say, over-exaggerating on their resumes. Um, but I think it's really important to speak honestly about yourself and, and really think, okay, what can I actually do? What do I do well? And how can I best portray that on my resume or my reel or whatever it is? And, and just really trying to show the best you, the best real honest version of you. Okay, that, that's a good one. Um, what other pointers for students? You just mean like going into the job force? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like applying. Um, I would I would definitely say persistence. Um, that's that's a big part of it. Don't be afraid to follow up, but don't do it too much to where you annoy the employer. Um, and again, I would touch on the honesty aspect of it all, but then just you know, really not being afraid to put yourself out there. Um, and I want to, I'll go back to what I was saying earlier. It's just not being afraid to step into something you've never done before. Um, and I'll use that job again, as an example, I'd hardly touched Photoshop when I graduated and used it every day. And since then I've used all the, all the other Adobe products and have been learning in them ever since. And, um, I've also come to find that a lot of people in, in the sports design field specifically are all self-taught. And I think that applies to a lot of other positions out there outside of sports, but really just media in general. A lot of people I found don't have formal training. A lot of them don't even have degrees um, and, and are self-taught. But again, I would obviously highly encourage going to school, um, but also not being afraid to look up and, and see what resources are available to you to learn from. Um, I think it's, it's an everyday process and something you can't really do on and off, but you really you have to be actively learning and wanting to learn if you want to get better and move further in your career. I'm curious too, you made the transition to grad school and a, a lot of people in, in this field don't, really think they're ever, <laughs> I know I felt that way when I graduated once upon a time. I was like, yay, I never have to spend another day in a classroom. <laughs> that was a lie. So what was it that made you kind of go, hmm, I think I'll do grad school. Why, why was that a consideration? Um, at, at one point, I don't really remember exactly the point. I want to say it was before I graduated, I realized I wanted to teach. I wanted to teach marketing and even video production. I really wanted to go back to Harding uh, to teach specifically, but um, in general, um, I, I realized that I had professors like you, uh, Mr. Tim Hamilton, Jim Miller and Dutch, and who just gave me a lot of opportunities at Harding that made me want to be able to give other students the opportunities. Um, and, and being able to do that is part of, of teaching. And, and I just, I wanna help other students learn and grow the way I've been able to. Um, and so uh, I started talking to you, I started talking to um, 
Jim Miller a little bit uh, about, you know, okay, what should I do now? Um, and at the time, I was also, this was when I was working at the Smokies. I had a few coworkers who were uh, getting their master's in sports management and um, were already halfway through their program. So that also kind of helped me think, okay, I need to go ahead and pursue this and I don't want to wait too long or else I'm not going to be motivated to, to continue. But um, it, it, for me, it was a lot of external factors that kind of contributed to it all but ultimately it was just a realization that I wanted to teach and help other students. One of the things that we want to talk about while we have you in this forum is this new internship program that MBS um, is launching and you're helping coordinate that. So what would you tell students who are like oh wait what is this? Um, Talk a little bit about the program and where we see it going. Absolutely. Um, well, it's like any new program, it's growing. And, uh, you know, I, to me, it's, it's kind of just untold where it can go. And uh, I'm stepping into it uh, with not a whole lot of prior knowledge or like, okay, here's everything we're going to do. But I, I'm learning along the way with you of what it can be, what it uh, will or how it will benefit you in the future, but uh, I'm really excited to help students discover that, um, to help give them those opportunities. To me, that's something that's really important. So um, I definitely want to make myself as open and available as possible to any and all students and would encourage any and all students to apply. And um, obviously we'll go from there and, and see, you know, how we can help you learn, how we can help you grow. Um, how we can help you expand those skills that are going to help you come graduation time, even in the crazy time we're in now. At some point, you know, I believe things will get back to some degree of normal that will allow us to, you know, be able to work the way we were before. Um, but again, to be able to do that, I want to help students be able to develop those skills. And that's, I think, to me, one of the biggest parts that this internship can do or that this program can do. Well, and a lot of students had summer internships disappear, which was especially mm -hmm. alarming for students, for seniors who, you know, some of some programs require internships. So the timing of this, I think, is, is pretty great. Um, are there any questions from our other attendees? Anyone else have anything they want to talk about? Ask John. Um, yeah, I, I have a question for you, Jonathan. You, you spent a lot of time uh, teaching yourself Photoshop, uh, getting, um, getting up to speed on what it can do and what you can do with it. Um, can you share any particular um, projects or applications of what you learned um, that you're particularly proud of that uh, you can describe to us as uh, perhaps as an example of what can be done uh, in, in graphic design. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the bigger projects I had when I was working for these, these teams, um, I mentioned I worked under one company or under one operating group. And so when I started, we, I was working for three teams and then eventually a fourth. And three of those teams had a um, game day program that they would give out uh, and it didn't change so it was just made at the beginning of the season and, and that was it and so to me that was three 40 page uh documents that i was trying to put together and, and i did i did this in uh, indesign um and i still worked in photoshop but mainly putting this um these documents together that was all in indesign and, and making these these big um booklets that they hand out and at the time, I was dealing with three different general managers and assistant general managers and everyone sending me different advertisements for different teams at different days. And um, I, did, I was able to do that for two years and, and the, that was always a huge project. But um, to me, I was able to learn to obviously stay on top of what I'm doing, but um, being able to follow up with people, being able to make sure I'm getting what I need to put it all together. And then 
going into it, I had also very little experience with InDesign as well. Um, but I was able to learn that along the way and, and um, begin to figure out the ins and outs of it. And by the time it was all said and done, I could say I put together uh, game day programs um, for those two seasons. And that was something I was very proud of because it was very stressful. It? But I, I can imagine. Did you, um, yeah. I, I assume that what you did was different for each of the teams. So. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that I guess if you can share anything about uh, how you try to make the team so uh, the work for the teams different uh, from one another so mm -hmm. that uh, they each had something uh, something unique representing them yeah absolutely um, so for each team I would design two different covers um, and each each team at the time they have their own style that I was able to follow. So for the other pages I needed to create throughout each one, I would take that style and implement it. Um, and just like you said, be able to give each one their own touch. There was times where it was a little easier, um, where all these teams are in pretty close proximity to one another. So some of them shared sponsors, which made that aspect go a little quicker, but um, being able to make each one different throughout each one definitely had its own uh, style and uh, pages. And um, really I was able to make uh, each one unique. I'm curious because you talked about, there, there's kind of two interesting things about that here because you're saying in your resume, be as honest as possible, but yet you're, you're also saying that you didn't have much experience in Photoshop or in design. So how did you, mm -hmm sell your boss or your potential employer mm -hmm. on your ability to do these things that you really hadn't done before, because that's pretty remarkable. Was it just a likability <laughs> factor? Was it just a connection? How do you feel? How did you make that work? Uh, I'd say in the last few months before I graduated is when I like started to discover like this whole field of sports design. Um, and started to get an idea of, you know, what looks, what looks cool, what's going to grab somebody's attention. And I started building and learning and it was actually a project for um, Tim Hamilton that kind of allowed me to dip my toes and discover, okay, maybe I can do this. And then when I graduated, I had actually, I designed another one for the women's basketball team or another design. Uh, and then just kept learning from there. And I realized, okay, I need a portfolio to show all this. And these days it's so easy to put together a website to show your work. Um, and so I had uh, started to make some more like just personal designs and I put them all together. And um, at the time, the, the guy that was hiring, I think it was, it was part of my work and it was also part of, he really needed someone because uh, the person in my position had had to leave. So um, for me, it was skill. I, I believe it was skill and also the timing. So they just, they really worked hand in hand, but it wouldn't have worked had I not realized I need a portfolio to put all this together. And to explain some of that, um, Tim Hamilton at Harding, he oversees all of our sports productions. We do live basketball, men, women's, et cetera, baseball, football. And at the end of the season, the coaches like a nice pretty DVD that they can, um, that, you know, kind of encapsulates the, the season and um, with promotional materials and that type of thing. So I'm, so you designed the cover for that for mm -hmm. several different teams, right? Yeah. First for uh, the football team uh, and then women's basketball the yeah. next semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that kind of explains how that happened, came about. Any other questions from our attendees? Yeah, I've heard um, previous students talk about uh, learning uh, design um, in school is like getting a piece of, the, um, of a jigsaw puzzle uh, and learning each individual piece. And when they get out professionally, they realize you have to put the whole jigsaw puzzle together um and, and have an overall philosophy uh d design ideas uh, 
uh, marketing ideas. Uh, did that did that come together for you when you uh, started uh, professionally? I would say slowly, but I would also say for me, it's still coming together. I, I really don't think, especially with how much design has grown and will continue to grow, you're never really going to be on top of it all. I think it's a continual learning process uh, as far as like, okay, what fonts look good? What um, layouts, what styles are, are in right now? And I think it's part of it's being able to recognize what's in now and what catches people's eye and what are, what are people talking about? Um, and then it's also uh, just being able to learn those things. Um, and again, I think for me, YouTube has been a huge resource because there's just tutorials beyond tutorials um, that people can learn from. So again, overall, I think it's just, it's one continual process where you're learning each individual aspect of it all. And it, it's just, it never stops. But I, I think that's, that's what keeps you going and being able to learn it all. What are some design don'ts? What would you tell students? Okay. Don't do this. Do this. If they're just, if they're putting together their own personal branding and, and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Say on a portfolio or, or a resume or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I would say, and something I've learned a lot, one thing that it really helps you get going is, is finding other designers that you admire, that you look up to, that design in a way that I guess really speaks to you and really catches your eye. And then a piece of advice I've learned with that is to not copy it and post it as your own, but go into Photoshop, look at it and try to recreate it so you can understand the processes and styles that are going into this. And then from there, you start to develop your own style uh, and, and figure out what processes work for you and, and how you develop your own art. Uh, for me, I'm on Twitter just about every day, probably longer than I should be, but um, I, I follow countless designers from other universities and professional teams uh, that are sharing their work every day. So for me, I just I click and save it into a little folder. And then whenever I'm trying to create something new, I'll go in and, and look for some inspiration um and, and try to find styles that I can incorporate into mine without copying it completely. Yeah, there's a difference between inspiration and plagiarism. <laughs> and yes. you can't you cannot pass yeah. off someone else's work as your own because they do find out because everything is everywhere and inevitably mm -hmm. it does catch up with you. Plus you don't want to make you don't want to make a habit of that. You know, you need to learn to, to trust your instinct on some things. But inspiration, inspiration is a good idea. I think of that in terms, I mean, that's true with just about anything. Music, video, the, the nature of video production. Um, is there a cliche thing that, you, that you're overseeing that students shouldn't do? I think of this in, in, in one way where Personally, I tend to judge a lot of other video because I'm, I have a background in video and I'm getting mm. tired of slow-mo, the slow-mo <laughs> video. It's just overused. It used to be, it used to be, you know, kind of a cool dramatic thing and now it's getting to where everybody does it. Is there anything along those lines that you can think of that you're like, eh, don't do this, move on to something else? I think that comes with paying attention to trends. Um, exactly what you were just saying. Um, I, again, I'll go back to Twitter. Um, say it's like Halloween. I remember a few years ago, Stranger Things, the show on Netflix had come out and every, every person, every designer under the sun for their team was designing a Stranger Things themed graphic saying happy Halloween and, and, I can't really say much else because I did the same thing at one point. <laughs> um, but uh, it, being able to pay attention to the trends and going back to something I was uh, earlier was 
okay, this is what's in right now. How can I take it and make it my own? Um, when you were talking about the slow-mos, I remember when I was taking a uh, film production class at Harding, uh, I had had checked out uh, one of the sliders uh, to get for one of my shots, but uh, I remember hearing multiple people say, that's so overdone, that's so, it's used so much. I'm tired of seeing that, like you were saying about the slow-mos. So uh, again, I think it's just recognizing, okay, what's being done right now? How can I make something that stands out and doesn't just fall in line with everything else and just, our attention spans are so short, you're scrolling through social media so fast. What can I make that's gonna catch your eye? Any other questions from our attendees? What recommendations, we'll just make this kind of the, the final question. If you had one final recommendation to make to students interested in what you're doing, what would that be? What was something that made a big difference for you? Say yes. Say yes. Um, that professor we, we talked about or mentioned, uh, Mr. Tim Hamilton, that was something very early on. And I think with my first meeting with him was say yes. Uh, I had never touched a camera for any live sports broadcast. I had never designed anything formally. I had never taken photos. There are a lot of things I had never done um, going into the later half of my undergraduate that I said yes to that have led to so many different opportunities that have led me to being in front of you now. So say yes, you have absolutely no idea where on earth it's gonna take you. Don't be afraid for the adventure. <laughs> mm -hmm. go, go and do and see what doors it opens. Well, great. Jonathan, thank you so much. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and with that, find mentors along the way too that you can stay connected with. Dr. Blackstone has been one for me since I've graduated. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. I love seeing our students do well. Um, so great, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I realize you're in grad school and you have a lot on your plate, um, but it's been wonderful talking with you. Um, and we look forward to seeing where this new internship program goes. So thank you for your participation. I'm excited and I would definitely encourage students to apply. Don't be afraid to apply. I'm here to learn and grow with you and, and help you in any way that I can. Mm -hmm.